Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about an interview on Geek and Sundry. It's a very good interview with Joseph Gordon Levitt, and he talks about his old school magic collection and he shows it off. Which there are plenty of good cards from Legends, and he has moxes. He talks about trading the white mox for something that he can't remember, and he probably got ripped off. So I can tell if someone plays Magic by their collection. Now a lot of people they've come into the game recently, so their collection doesn't have these old cards. But when I look at his collection, it makes me smile because. That's a true Magic player's collection. It's not some BS collection where you see a lot of content creators and they don't own any of the cards they talk about. It's one thing to make a deck tech when you have played the deck, and it's another to copy and paste it from a recent tournament event. The same can be said about MTG Finance, and that drives me insane. So this is his collection. You can see he has some Ice Age, he has some Unlimited, he's got some Legends, the Sledge Tro is probably Unlimited, and he has a Mox Sapphire which is Unlimited. And he talks about playing Icy Manipulator being one of the best cards when he was playing. He talks about Nightmare. I mean these are classic cards that any old school, if you played Magic during so I, I'll just put it this way, like, and I, I know this is going to offend 98% of my audience, but I'm going to just go ahead and say it. If you played Magic before it was cool, if you played Magic when your English teacher saw it was demonic and would throw them in the recycling bin, and then your friend would jump in the recycling bin and say that because now he has got the Magic cards, they're his now, uh, Brandon and Ravi and in uh, elementary, not elementary, middle school. That's exactly what happened to my friends. If people used to bully you, uh, Phil, one of my other friends, he was African American, and this kid used to bully him for playing magic and took his magic cards and threw them in the trash can, which is actually a common occurrence. Uh, and then he punched them, and he obviously was suspended for a week, but as a magic community, we felt so proud. We were like, oh man, we totally stood up. Although none of us did anything, and it was Phil who punched the other dude. But after that, no one really messed with uh, us when we played magic. Uh, there, there was before homeroom, we played during lunchtime, we played during gym class, where the gym teacher is telling us stories about Dungeons and Dragons and how he used to bully kids who played Dungeons and Dragons, and is this like the new advanced Dungeons and Dragons? And yeah. Or if the most popular kid uh, would come to you and say, hey, my brother's a nerd and he wants this magic card, so I'm going to give you $5 and you better take it. Yeah. So that's what this guy's talking about. That's what this famous actor is talking about. And he ha plays magic. Magic was so different back then than it is today. So our local game stores were very different. Uh, we actually had a Wizards of the Coast local game store where we could have our FNM magics, and that was a ton of fun. I remember uh, my friend Brandon buying a booster box of Onslaught, and he opened a foil windswept heath and a bunch of fetch lands, but of course we didn't know what they were worth, but guess what? The adult did, and they he totally butchered them, uh, traded a few avatars. Uh, Prophecy was... I think it was the avatars. He traded him like a whole playset of avatars of each one. There was one for each color. And at the time, that seemed like a good trade. But in hindsight, it was never a good trade. But what, what was he going to do with a foil windswept heath? So I remembered those very well. He's got the blinking spirit. He's got the nightmare. He's got the Sarah Angel. Uh, these are not his whole collection. These are probably just his favorite cards. But he's got the Mox Ruby. He's got the Ice Age card. So Ice Age was not that long ago, in my opinion. And what's that card? It steals other legendary creatures, I think. The It's like Meret. It's a beautiful card. Uh, Sledge Troll, of course, is favorite. And this is the person you need to hire. This is like who you need to hire. Because they actually enjoy magic. So in my opinion, Wizard of Coach, when they did the Community Cup, there was a certain cheeseburger that was voted in and he didn't win a single game of magic so let me 
understand this. He goes to play against like terrible Magic players who work in R&D. And he cannot somehow win a single game of Magic. And as soon as he was done, they canceled the whole event. And the event was called the Community Cup. So let me repeat this again. A cheeseburger gets invited to go to a community cup for the community. And actually, I was a big proponent of electing said cheeseburger, which he was elected. Uh, and obviously, he begged and pleaded, and you know how it goes. And then he goes, and he loses every single game. And it becomes readily apparent to me that this guy doesn't play Magic. And it makes sense because he doesn't have a local Magic store. He buys all his Magic from Walmart. And he's proud of that fact. So as soon as he's done, you know, the community wins because that's how it has to go. It's already scripted. So eventually they pull ahead. And then everyone gets a free Magic Online card to celebrate this, quote, victory. And then the event gets canceled forever. My gosh, that's a terrible waste of money. Or... Let's pay a bunch of Hearthstone players. Let's pay people who don't want to be there. And let's allow them to open Alpha and Beta and Arabian Nights packs that no one, the and let's call it the uh, showcase, the silver showcase. Packs that like if a person who's new to Magic is watching a Arabian Night pack opening, is like, wow, that's really awesome. How can I get one of those? Uh, $10,000, please. Like... It makes no sense why that would be the format. And secondly, it makes no sense why there's such a large guaranteed amount of money. My gosh, it's terrible. Like, my God, you have pros actively giving up money to protest. Let me repeat pros who don't make that much money to begin with are actively foregoing. Potential revenue, large potential revenue, I think $12,000 to protest the treatment of other pros. This is what's happening. And it's it's just terrible, right? Because here we have a dude, clearly he likes magic, clearly he has the time for it, clearly he can talk about old school magic, and he can bring in so much more people. And Wizard of Coast didn't tap into him. They didn't try to pay him for a commercial. Like, what are they doing? This is an actual Magic player from the good old days of Magic. And I know people hate when I say that, but Magic wasn't, it's not like today. Like today, it's super different from when I grew up with Magic. Um, it was not, it's not, it's so different. I, I can't even explain it to you. But there was more dedication, there was more of a community, there was more of a you play magic, we're going to be friends even if I really don't like you. And that's what happened with me and another dude because I didn't like him, he didn't like me, but we both played magic and we had the same set of friends by definition because we played magic. We would have sleepovers at uh, people's homes, he would sleep over my home, his home, all of, our, all of our friends would do that and that would be how we became people. And it wasn't a bad way to grow up. I can tell you that much. Yeah, were we bullied? Yeah. Did the gym teacher not really get it? Yeah. Did the English teacher think we were doing demonic rituals? Yeah. But at the end of the day, this dude gets it. And when I watch other content creators, and then the best way I can say it is I look at their collection, and nothing in their collection jumps out to me as like, this is actually a magic player. This is someone who played without sleeves. Imagine that, right? I mean, the number one YouTube channel just talks about sleeves all the time and deck boxes and stuff. I mean, right? That's what his claim to fame is. Man, we didn't have sleeves back then. We didn't even have penny sleeves. Like, penny sleeves was an innovation. <laughs> when I remember in middle school, when the first person, um, Matt, bought in penny sleeves for his more valuable card, which at the time we didn't know was unvaluable because we had the uh, Inquest magazine that was six months old and all the prices were based on that one magazine that one kid had. Those are good old days, you know, it's the good old days. And people don't like when I say that because they don't, you know, they want to talk about like equality and genderlessness and all this great stuff about magic and community outreach and 
oh, look at this character and look at this character. Oh, Chandra is now a lesbian with uh, Nissa. Was it Nissa? Yeah, Nissa. Or was it Nissa made moves on Chandra, but Chandra felt offended, but they didn't really want to offend Nissa, so she didn't say anything and then misled her. That's the last piece of uh, lore I read was about that. And I made a video about it because I was like, wow, where, where are we coming from? Like, where's it going on? Like, like, where did this come from? Like, like Chandra has been since Lauren, and and Nissa has been since Lauren too. And it's like, oh come on, no, it's Nissa and Zendikar, I think. Mm, Nissa chose, yeah, Zendikar. Nissa chose no one Zendikar. Chandra was in Zendikar as well. I guess that's when the romance started. So there's a lot of stuff I look at in today, and I'm like, hmm, I'm not going to say anything about it, but no, it doesn't seem. Seems kind of strange. Like, if you told me this is the direction of magic when I was a little kid, first of all, I wouldn't believe the game still existed. And secondly, I would say no. I would say, hmm, so a bunch of nerds, mostly male nerds, are going to, you know, somehow change and evolve, like, as... I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'll just go out and say it. The demographic targeting of Magic back then, if you watch the commercials and with the uh, orgs and all that fun stuff, it was a lot different than it is today. Now, of course, you know, we, you know, I welcome acceptance, more women in Magic, more um, purple aliens and blue demons and magic yes i accept all that and that's really good and the more diversity we have the better our community can grow because then it can grow faster and can grow in different areas however it's nice to see someone who played magic when they were younger and understand magic from my point of view which is very different from the majority of current content creators I have the boxes, I have the cards, I have the bulk to prove that I actually play Magic for a long time. I mean, I'm still opening stupid Modern Masters 25. Like, it's like I never stopped opening stuff. Now, I am not going to open the new set, which name I'm not going to even mention, but I'm not going to open that set because honestly, I'm protesting it just like I protested RTR. I felt they overprinted it, and they did, and I protested it by not buying Battle for Zendikar because I was like, oh, this is just going to be worse than RTR, and it turned out to be far worse with the expected value box under $30. So, yeah, I mean, hire this dude. This dude's great. Bye, guys.